Grady's from MRH, get these services. We're here live in the set, getting it done. One more again. This is a special segment that is written out the on the range by MRH. As we get in the down, we've added some weight to the bag. We're right around the 500 pound marker that we was going for. Again, this is green tops, green bottoms. We carved it out. We had about an extra 70 pounds. Our weight scale only goes up to about 450. So we don't know if we're at 505, 510, or right around 500. But we're here getting it done live. For those who've never seen 500 pounds lifted before, unannounced, but secure over the 475 to 505 ratio barrier. This is what you are seeing right here, right now. Like I said before, we don't want to leave y'all out. So we do have a recorded live. Getting it done in the summer. It's a much warmer climate. Keep the stagnated cold, flu, sicknesses, illnesses, all that stuff off you. We are presenting it with commentary for the long distance. Debut at 500 pounds. We did address all of the mazes. We was trying to get outside, get into the SUV with the small tow log that can handle the 500 pounds being lifted. We're still working on that. We're still spitting game tight. But right here, right now, getting it done. Auto support issues, you know, the goodness that we address is all into the game of weightlifting. Into the seasonal sports academic relationship of powerlifting and building with commentary, of course, presenting the, the breath technique. You have had a chance to see it from about 175 pounds to where we are right now in the unknown between about 475 and 505.
So when we get into some of the, the game time situations where you get the full breakdown, we want to show you why we do this look and why we started at a lesser weight and worked our way into it over about a two and a half year period since I've been pretty much cataloged into this weight lift. This is a full power clean into a full front tilt. So right here, the back twist, back into position, and the back down into the full squat. We acknowledge this lift, a stage performance. So you get it at the concert level if you're just a regular artist starting out and you're just doing routines. We show you going through the routines. We did it lifting weights, commentary, singing, dancing, rapping, comedy, the full talent and the whole show. When you want to get into us setting the industry standard for this, we're gonna make it look easy. So for those who come up underneath us, those who have a chance to agree and get nice in the game, they really can. They can see the weight being lifted. And of course, the benefits of keeping that bodybuilder look. Now, if you for those who are going for the for the full health and fitness, you want the ripped up, you know cut look, you'll get that if you're not power lifting and you don't want to look like a power lifter. Here I'm showing you the cross train between the power lifter and you know the, the very physique look when you're going for a fitness upkeep. So we want that that power lift power lifter look kind of builds the mass more Shows more of the muscle definition. Here we're going for a stage performance in this category of timing. It means we're in the entertainment, we're doing written compositions, we're staying within our own guidelines and source of building, and of course, keeping that statute in place. So you ain't gonna find us doing anything different than we was doing before. As a writer, dancer, author, entertainer, artist, athlete, or student. Now, it is good we are presenting this lift over the camera phone because we like to keep the chemistry right. What's up, ladies? What's going on? I know everybody out there got a phone nowadays, so we, we're keeping the phone lines clean. You up a power clean, come straight out of here. Clean phone lines, pure power clean. Squat it out, get nice. Now, I know you guys haven't had a chance to see the results as being here, seeing the weight actually being weighed out. Put into the bag and then seeing the look happen. Which isn't a bad thing. But we do have the commentary in the long distance procession to present you with that conglomerate to the expertise. So when you find me lifting weights at 500 pounds, it won't be to a extent of non-realistic beliefs. This is really about 500 pounds. Weight scale only goes up to about 450. And I didn't add it about 60 to 70 pounds. So it's not a game. What that's about is an athletic term. If I'm in shape enough and I want to go to the NBA, I'm in the NBA tryouts. And I just want to know as a coach, as a person, as a player, 
would you bench someone who can lift 500 pounds from a full squat, talk to you, commentate to you from a team? When you're looking for that leverage, when you're looking for that type of expertise, when you're looking for that explosiveness, when you're consistently building, you want to see new things become possible. So, again, we leave that kind of open channel to you. With that being said, with a phone, when we download and upload, would you rather have somebody lifting 500 pounds uploaded in your phone that you can reference and understand the same processes being taken place throughout some of your most time spent fantasy worlds that you would support. So if you're not a baller, if you're not a player, but you know what it'd be like to be on top of your game. So again, if I have 500 pounds in the bag and I'm lifting it and I'm saying, would you, would you put 500 pounds on the bench or does 500 pounds enter the game? I'm talking about the league. So people want to know, what's that about? How does that work? What's that called? So those are some of the core expectations that you should be able to get when you just upload and you see it's me, Mike Henry, owner of MRH Gifting Services, producing, you know, just do a written composition on the phone. We're clearing the phone lines. You're getting clear, exact phone lines. So your stuff be tight and right when it's time to get nice. So like I always say, we ain't leaving y'all out, but we're showing you the nooks and crannies of the ability just to upload and download this on your phone. Of course, we address it in our stage performance as industry standard, just as a new company coming up that's been in the game. But dealing with entertainment, the arts, academically, athletically, people want to be able to see this. They want to be able to rationalize this. Because if you do bench 500 pounds in a game, I mean 500 pounds sitting on the bench in a game, and we're talking long distance weightlifting, what does that do for the other team? What does that do for your team in a camaraderie type situation? Is it because the other team can't say, well, no, coach can bench 500 pounds for the first half and second half in a full NBA game? That's just something another team couldn't do or another coach couldn't do. Does that reflect me as a player, coach? Well, as a player, coach, of course, I would sit the bench and coach, but I would be suited up as a player ready to actually play in the game. So do you bench someone who squats out, power cleans, or what they call from the dead, left 500 pounds, can go for an hour straight, hour and a half, two hours, full game, doing the lift. Do you want that ability? Do you understand the significance of where that is established? We're talking about just coaching. Just 500 pounds. Do you bench it? Or do you renegotiate, come back to the table as a player coach, Say, so, y'all, this is 500 pounds. I'm putting up right here, right now. Full deadlift squat into the power clean motion. Who's doing this right now in the league? Just who is? Who's there right now? Is this, is this going to be the start of the real thing? 
Is this going to be the difference in a game time situation? Will you be able to bench someone who can squat out 500 pounds? Not that it's 500 pounds of just weightlifting. We're talking about finesse the game. So when you look at the results, it's player coach. So I'm suiting up just like every player, but I'm also coaching. So I'm showing them and allowing them to see as a weightlifting mentor, uh, sports, medicine, all those achievements that you have seen, you would be able to see in the actual league. You would be able to agree and understand the competitive nature of a sport. So why would I sign for 250 mil a year? Well, I fully power clean out 500 pounds consistently with commentary, showing the breath technique. And it's in the contract, like an agreement to be a player coach. So when I'm on the bench, at the aim, on the bench, that is exactly what the other team cannot do, is bench someone who can lift 500 pounds for an hour, talk to you, keep it calm. So that means you're not getting the, the technical dispute. You're not getting the playerism of, of course, the replay, or what they call the automatic replay, and you get caught. You flop it out live on TV, and then you get caught. So what type of player are you? What type of, you know, what, what type of values are you going to represent? Now, if you're going to talk about that things are in your favor, then that's great. That's exactly what we want to see. But here, we address each area of those concerns like a grace period, like a time frame, like you've never been around anything like this before in your life. The next time, we don't know. So we want to show you and give you the opportunity, not only as this is the industry standard, stage performance. People who agree can expect this, who experience my works. That means longevity and weightlifting, healthcare, upkeep, and health of just sustaining family mode, just all day, every day. So we don't want to lose no one out in that consideration. And that's just being a aware industry executive. So when you see my stuff, MRH exec, MRH edu, this is why we represent like that in our letterheads. Now, again, in the player code situation, we're showing you the dynamics of industry standard. So as a player, I'm also a writer. I like to compose. My position on the court would be point guard. So as a point guard, I would produce the rock or I would distribute the rock. So I'm showing you each of the areas of composition in a non-lethargic terms. Meaning this is off season this summer. Everybody know who won the championships and was into that. Now we get down to the nitty gritty of things. Coming in as a player coach to the next league, league officials. They'll be able to upload this, download it, and see the simplifications that have been made to actually still produce, is what we're saying. So we're coming into being, you know, the strongest man in the world, you know, at this lift, particularly this style, this type of weightlifting. Just the strongest man in the world at this style of weightlifting. So we're not talking about all the other considerable styles of weightlifting. Just this right here. We present this on stage. It's just a mat heavy bag full of weights and me. Getting down, getting nice. So, 
as we go to negotiation. We're right here. We're showing you why this works. How it works. The leverage you're looking for. I initially called this my PowerPoint presentation. Because we're just lifting weights. And it was, you know, 400, 500, excuse me, 300, 400 pounds a few months ago. I was just going on, keeping the commentary, working on the breath technique to get to these points so you can negotiate from a position of power, position of respect, where it is actually honored because if you're an athlete, you know what the full squat is about. You know what the power clean and jerk is about. So, we're not gonna discuss the bent over raw and back, the forward tilt, 500 pounds, putting it back into motion. The twist, you're working your, your abs and your obliques. Can you catch an elbow from seven, four, 300 pounds? And you want to be able to take it. I'm 210 pounds. This is a little bit over 500 pounds, I'm sure of it. And, you know, I work out 300 pounds over my body weight. So, that keeps me affluent in the ratio of the game as I distribute the rock. So, as a point guard, as a player coach in the game, It'll be 500 pounds that can be lifted in heavy bag weight. But when it's benched as a player coach, as when I'm sitting on the bench coaching, it'll be 500 pounds not in the game. So showing you the areas of where the sport is actually going for the athlete. So when it's in the game, it's time to play. We want to see you at your best. But when it's not, doesn't mean you're not going to be able to play at your best. This is that this type of work ethic isn't going to be on the floor, and it'll be in coaching. Now, this is just to make, you know, everybody more successful. So you understand being a free agent, coming into the gang, and you just got gang and stats. And that's usually all you need. But as a player coach, we're dealing with some of the core issues of the, your floor presence. How would I represent on the floor? So, on the floor, it would be 500 pounds being lifted, you know, and that would all transist into, what are you talking about, defense? Are you talking about offense? Are you talking about playing a whole game, running up and down the floor? So, as we release all the tension, all the resistance of 500 plus pounds, that's what that would feel like, running up and down the floor. Like if you lost 500 pounds. Our effects are demonstrated right here live on camera. We put it in your phone. So it's accessible, you can upload it, download it, and reference it. We keep it that way for the support issues. All those orders. So we take away your stresses and your pains and your, your desires to feel like he's not doing enough. Or what's going on? So we're coming into an era, time period, the strongest man in the world. It's just 500 pounds, but we're just getting it done right here. This style, this lift, this weight. We're not saying nobody else can do it. We want the chemistries to be right so a girl will feel the need to pick up the bag one day. Start at a lesser weight, get nice. Feel fit, tone, look good and be successful. And understand that at 500 pounds, it still went on for an hour or half hour. What was it like at 20 minutes? Those are some of the attributes or questions that can be asked. But as you see me commentating, you'll understand we're still taking care of business. So even through our negotiations as a player coach, having that presence on the court as a actual player, then we step into the actual talent of the game. Now, in the talent of the game, you want to deal with skills. So it takes skills to build your repertoire. 
It takes skills to build your statistical records. So this is where we build them. What is this called? We just announced this as out of thin air. So if you lift weights before and you got tired of lifting weights or you've actually ran a lap and got tired after you ran the lap, it kind of feels like you're breathing heavy, you're kind of out of air, you regroup, you get your oxygen back. This is why we call this out of thin air. So at this weight, 500 pounds, it's like building straight out of thin air. So if you ask somebody who can lift 500 pounds five times, after the fifth time, you would be tired. You would be fully in the gasp of regaining your air flow and feeling comfortable again. So we're at an endurance ratio. So if you just do squats, if you're just to sit down and do squats, no weights, and wait till you get tired and you feel that burn, and you feel your legs getting tight, and it feels like you can't go no more, you're getting tired, and then you gotta catch your breath. That's called out of thin air. Here, if you do your ratio breakdown, the consistent variation, this is just like being out of thin air, except we're actually out of thin air. So we're building in the pure oxygen realm. That's the only way you can really lift 500 pounds and keep going for an hour straight or 20 minutes straight from a full squat into a power clean position. So if you see somebody who's actually power clean, then they go until they can't just lift no more. And when you go and you just can't lift no more, you'd be tired. And you have to go catch your breath because you'd be out of air. This is where we show you keep on going so you're out of thin air. Now, when the skill level of this full intent as an autobiography, as a stage presence in performing, this also is like the ghost effect coming out of thin air. So, when you find yourself in that intent and you're dealing with that skill level, you might see it more or less as um, seeing somebody levitate or seeing somebody perform a magic trick. So if you've never seen things appear out of thin air that are pretty much for the good of things or the completion or the grand finale of your actual venue or your choreographed authentic production, We want to make sure that you're not missing out on each level and how to actually see it so when it comes by you, you don't miss it. I'll show you what I mean. One day you're at the gym and you're doing squats. You grab, get on the squat bar. Throw on 225 and you're warming up. You warm up at 225 and you knock out about 10 sets, stretch a little bit, you get loose. Boom, throw on a 35. I got another 10 sets, warming up, you're getting loose. Take out the 35, put on three, 45, so you're 315, you're about to do your squats, and you're about to do your pyramid set, you just warmed up. So at 315, you squat out, you know, eight times, five reps. And you know, it feels pretty good. You might add 10, 15, maybe even 25 pounds on your last set to get right. And that's your complete workout for the day. And that will pretty much sustain you as working out, being tired, lifting weights, re-energizing, building, making sure you get all your carbs right, make sure you, your intake of calories is correct, watch your, new, your nutritional values and cholesterol because you're weightlifting now and so you're sustaining yourself and making decisions about your own body so as you get to that level of what they call just the natural ability to weightlift you'll understand that that's pretty much a workout 500 pounds is considered a max weight you may do it four or five times, 
even in a squat. So again, that would be one level. Now, another level would be just doing standing squats. So a lot of people do standing squats. They can go for five minutes straight and do just standing squats, no weight, your own body weight, and they can see results and feel good about themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's another level. Then you have what is called when you actually are doing a cardiovascular workout. So you may do a uh, wall squat. A wall squat is where you squat down on the wall, bend your knees, you actually have your, your back against the wall, your actual butt is a little bit below the knees and you stand there and you see how long you can sit in that position. And those are called wall squats. Now, when I used to do them, I used to dribble basketball, listen to have my headphones on, and try to lose track of time. But when I first started out, I only do about maybe eight minutes, 10 minutes before it start burning. I try to stand up. So that's how I started out doing those. I know that's a level of the game. So as I take you through those levels, I'm just showing you what it's like when you get here. So there is some substance. It is actually possible. It can happen. You can get to this level of the game. Now this is a full squat. This is where your, your butt is all the way down and you really have to power lift straight up. So you're not cheating yourself. So you're not just that knee length in your bend. And that's called the full squat for time, distance, and ratio. And those are the levels of actually doing that. So when you get to this level, is what I'm saying, it's like coming out of thin air. The things it represents at a skill level, you have seen before, somewhere, or you've tried, or you know that's the only way to get there. If you lift this amount of weight, if you get this nice in the game, and you still consistently produce as you know you come into your progression in a workout state. So as we continue to build in this lift, this is how you establish coming out of thin air as one of the stage presences. So this is why we say this. This is why we do this lift. One of the skill levels of it is coming out of thin air. So if you've ever shot a jump shot and you airball, do you understand coming out of thin air? So you airball, you shoot a shoot a jumper. Because you got a jump and you in the lead. But you shoot an air ball. So as you shoot an air ball, that means you're coming out of thin air. Hopefully. Because the nature of the game is for the actual ball to go into the bucket. So this power lift. It's like shooting a jump shot and hit bottom of the net. You know the sound. When you're 30 feet out and you're in your zone and it's just falling. So, out of thin air. What type of jumper do I have? Well, I'm out of thin air. Uh, according to this right here, 500 pounds, or whatever time length we got, ain't gonna be no air ball. This is what was to come when I was talking about pro out of high school in 1996. Might have been there. So what you're seeing right here is in your own work ethics. When you start attempting this lift, you start understanding, is it 500 pounds on the court being lifted every day? Is this what you want to see on the court? every day? Do you want to be an opponent on a consistent basis to this every day? As a coach, as a player, we, come, we talk about skill level, we're coming out of thin air. 
So as a player, it ain't going to be nothing but the bottom of the net. You're talking about some competition. So we would only show that level of the game where it is comprised to be paid, where it is flamboyant to present your game an ability and awareness on a consistent basis. So you know what that would be like coming out of thin air. Now, you know the ghostly effect of coming out of thin air. But now we're talking about coming out of thin air and airballing, shooting a jumper 23 feet out and it falling consistently. This is what this sports medicine, this is what this psychology would do for you. So again, we've seen opposition. They ain't there yet. They ain't coming out of thin air. So they couldn't manage, coach, or step onto a court and be effective. They ain't came out of thin air yet. Not at 500 pounds, but we still talking to you. So if I'm bringing the ball up court, and I'm throwing a assist, that assist goes down as out of, straight out of thin air. So the skill level raises consistently immediately, even in its diameter of the game. That means an actual full court. That means anything that's coming my way. So when you understand the gameplay, the level of sustainability, you're taking someone, you're taking a, an average shooter, you know, average shooter, 12 points a game, three assists, one steal, two, 36 points a game, 10 assists, eight boards, and eight steals. So this is what the game didn't have a chance to be at in a level of gameplay. But I was coming up. But this is what they missed. This is what they didn't get. They didn't get out of thin air. No air balls. So that means it raised the percentage of the actual jump shot. It raised the court vision and the ability to play the game. And in those terms, shoot a jumper, bust someone up, go down, Steal it from them, break them, and then win the game. It's about game winners. So, again, I take you through this procession because it's necessary in having that level of the gameplay on a consistent basis. And once you're there, everybody plays at that level. Who would? But what I'm saying is, you've never seen it in this practice format. This is our two a day, summer two a days. We just lift two times a day, do about 20, 30 minutes in the morning, after mid-afternoon, then in the evening, we knock it out, try to get about an hour in. And really talk to you. So you understand. This is really hot. This is really going down. So as we're taking you out of thin air on a skill level, we're showing you where those ratio effects and weights I was talking to you about at 300, 400 pounds come into play. We started negotiation for the contract as a player coach. I started showing you what it would be like to have 500 pounds, be the strongest man in the world, but have nothing but game and skills in, on, or in or on the hoop court. And that's what you would run into. So you would run into add a thin air and raise the full advanced awareness of the game. You would take smarter jump shots. You would take more high percentage shots as an actual game player. Now, me, MRH, of course, that's coaching. Coming off the bench, you have to actually experience those skills and feel what that would be like. Now, if you don't want to feel what that would be like, of course, you would go through the correct processes to not want to feel what coming out of thin air is like. I mean, there's no air balls. That means your jumper is falling uh, about 20 times out of 10. 
more in the actual ratio effect to explain. So that's, you know, that's getting your ass busted. Even if you ain't there, it's still going down. Someone's still gonna be putting in the work in the gym to be successful. The game has to go on. And that's all we're talking about. So, again, that's coming from the industry, industry standard into the actual court performance as a player coach. Now, the industry standards are totally different because you got a microphone, you might be have an earphone, you might have to bust a, a spin, drop down, do some pelvic thrusts, you know what I'm saying, holler at the crowd, and you could be nice in the game. Remember your lines, be on point in your dance modes, your choreographing, and you understand that. So this is exactly where we show that as not being a vulnerability. But you have to be, of course, processable enough to sit back and watch. Because it is five months. I told you we was trying to get outside to get this done. We took you through a few movie scores. I think we addressed Tarzan because the nature of where we start here. Fully exercise that, the king of the jungle. So, y'all ain't monkeys running around. Took you through the strap breaking on the six bag, left hand, third pull up on the six bag, breaking every curse on the left. So, y'all don't fall for that mumbo jumbo. Then, we back here with green tops and bottoms, getting it done at five humps. Same weight, we just added the weights up from the four, I think it was at 445. Back then, we had five pounds to go on the weight scale to actually know how much weight it would really be. Now we're completely over the weight scale weight, and it's five by 500. It could be 495. Might read 495 if I tilt it forward this way a little bit. It could be 500 about right here. If I tilt it this way, it might read 510. So we don't know, but we love the ratio of fully working out at all of those angles of weight. So it gives you a dynamic of geometry, and mathematics, why the lift actually works, and taking you through the full process. How did we get there? Just like anything else, we practiced, we worked hard. We went through 40 minute sets, hour sets, two hour sets. We addressed those in opposition. Those that was coming fully thinking and aware that there was none of this going on. We set those world records at from 175 pounds, and they'll reflect at 500 pounds. They'll reflect at 550. When we move up to 600, what is that going to be like? Who's going to be around? You know, we, we addressed it. It's all good for Babe to so, so babe can nut up right next to a brother and be nice. You have to address those compliments to the game. Because you're dealing with the chemistry of true evolution, straight out of thin air. It's a powerful resistance relief. You're no longer dealing with nothing, no less than a safer sex or intercourse ability. So again, you're grown now. So you have to entertain yourself with those core areas of concern on a daily basis. So if you play in the game, your sweat's dripping in. You know, you, you're balling, you're hitting, you're bouncing off fools. You have to be accustomed to be ready at any point in time to know that you're going to be game tight. With that being said, your girl's going to have to net up right, meaning when she wants to lean on you, it's got to be this. If she has to, it's got to be right here. Or, you know, you want to have your cheese right and feel comfortable about yourself. So, we're not saying go way out of your way and do things that would be obscene or unjustified. We're just saying this is setting the industry standards. This is our stage presence. This is if I get hired as a coach. This is my core energy. This is if you want to man up and feel the one-on-one -on -one pressure. This is what you would get out of thin air. So my stuff would be falling out of thin air. That means my stuff wouldn't bubble through the rim and hit this bottom of it. And so we call it now. So it has its power.
passage of genealogy throughout its effect. I mean, it always comes to pass when the work is there. We actually know. So we don't want to be distant, but it has to get done right here in the weight room. It makes no difference who you are, where you're at, what you do. But if you ain't doing this on a regular basis and you're not actually verbally comprising yourself with the jargon of the hoop court game, then you won't be successful. And I'll show you why, because it's not all about here and here. It's all about here and here. So when you go through your motions of process, that's why I'm still 500 plus pounds when I'm in the down motion and I'm holding the ranks. But I'm telling you, we, we release that energy, that, that, re, that restraint, that resistance and let it go. And then we pick it back up. So when we fully distribute the rock, or when I shoot a jumper, it's falling under the pretense and in the ability of the bottom of the net every time. We've seen air balls. We know those mistakes. You're not supposed to make those mistakes at the pro level. But what I'm saying is, as a player coach, if I was in the game, this would be my energy. This would be my presence. If you could fall into it, if I would let you into my game, then it would be that way. Of course, all the time. You want me to manage you. You don't know you want to win championships. You want to see a, a higher percentage proved through the weightlifting ratios up and down. Forward and back. Twist side to side. You want to deal with your full circumference of what will make you go and make you think you could just continually be that awesome in the game. This is where you would agree. You might sign and say, yeah, I can get the job done working with a work ethic like this. Now, all that's talk. All that's talk until... These weights, so these weights stacked up, show and prove, I have to come out and say, what does he mean? And then somebody signs, someone hires, but they agree with MRH gifting services. They understand the disclosure in the PowerPoint presentation. You understand the nature of the athletic mind state, just being creative enough to heal those who really don't have a jumper. Or to heal those that, you know, they don't have enough game like this to be successful and start as a player. Coach, I'm not talking about just being a player, because at this level, you just can't be a player. You got to be a player coach. That doesn't mean player manager. You got to be a player coach. So you got to show them what it's like to turn it off. And you got to show them what it's like to turn it on. So we took you through some instances throughout my own career of how that worked and what that was truly about for me. I fell into a situation where the building wasn't up to code and they told you live on TV, but everybody still showed up to the game. So again, it was those type of situations where, you know, if you just listen and pay attention a little bit, you don't have to listen to everything. You don't have to do everything they say, but if you listen and pay attention a little bit, We've seen it that way, and so you got to know how to turn your game off, and you got to know how to turn your game on. So when the facility is shown live on TV, it's not up to come, but everybody's showing up. You turn the game off, so you hear nothing from it, but you heard you know, some of the work ethics that we put into place. We articulated our actual work structure through our management in the artistic form of stage performance and dialogue. It took them through those processes. But it was a time to turn the game off. You know, saying the buildings are structurally sound. The buildings are structurally sound. 
administratively, an opposing team can come back, petition for the championship that didn't make it to the building, and actually have rights to it under building codes, fire codes, you know, everything that implements the game to make it, of course, safe, successful, and, and all leadership, of course, a team win. So, we show you that aspect. It was a time to turn it. Can you turn it on? And can you turn it off? So, we showed you. Turn the game completely off. Now, with all that being said, the ring is gone. Old school arena that was seen as a structurally sound called the Kingdom is gone. Now, it's a whole new arena built. And all you hear from me is world records. Time to turn the game on. So we're at 500 pounds right here, right now. So it depends where you want to be successful as a player. It depends if you want to abide by the rules and follow the rules. It depends if you have the capability of congratulating those that surround you with the insights to what makes a great team successful. What's gonna make you a champion? Because we all know what the outdoor balling is like. You can be a baller outdoor champion, and there's nothing wrong with that. Until you balling outdoors and the concrete's uneven. 10 4 on one side. And 10 feet on the other. So you start understanding court regulation. It's the goal of 10 feet. The goal is 10 feet, but the rim, the bottom of the rim, sits at 10 feet. Meaning the, bo the bottom part that bolts to the actual backboard. Two bottom bolts sit at 10 feet, but the rim sits at 10-3. Ten, 10-3 three. Ten, three and a quarter. Are you aware of that? Can you handle it when your jumper don't fall? Can you handle it when you go up to dunk and you barely get over the rim, but it still looks like a dunk? We want to take you through those processes. We want to show you how those regulations can be misunderstood. So if the building ain't correct, and then I go ahead and put my 110 in, championship out, and come back, and someone else is feeling the way I'm feeling, and I didn't deed up, and I didn't four dunks, and 20, 28 points, five boards, then I don't want nobody else feeling like this. You see what I'm saying? But they can petition for that and feel the same way you feel in your own conglomerate of your own achievements. Now, I address the issues, of course. As I said, I, I wrote about these things through my writing. Why would I be writing? And not in the gym working out. Why would I have double compilation CD discs that went triple platinum and not be in the gym shooting a thousand jumpers? So when people had a chance to see that, they couldn't evaluate that. So they presented themselves as opposition because they weren't smart enough to understand the intent turning the game off. Either you on or you off. So, again, when you have point guard skills, you address those issues accordingly. You show them how that works. But, again, you just don't take no mess. You know, just run up and, and be cool. Say, we know it's going to be too difficult to be at 520 minutes in the game talking to someone. 
So you may not never make it there, but you want to be a part of that success. Where is that happening? Where is that going to be its most successful? Where is out of thin air going to play its major part? Who's shooting air balls? You wouldn't catch me shooting air balls. So when I was coming up, I avoided the air ball. And I was claiming and knowing pro at a high school administratively would have to consist of those type of features just as an intelligence on the court, as an athlete. Before I decided to understand that is very clear approach and realize what it would have to be to get that level of the game and point across on a consistent basis. So we took you through those passages, those impartations. Uh, the game was totally turned off. You didn't hear it from me, but I had two compilation double disc CDs out. I have over notebooks of just information. You know, what I was going to be doing when all this was happening, just to be structurally sound, motivated to continue to succeed, but not have to exploit my level of the game at its best during a time where I perform its best isn't at its tippy top condition. And yeah, it's easy to go somewhere else, you know, talk about it, come back to the game, and let the mother fools go through it, break them in the end, and then you lose because of unsportsmanlike conduct because you have your own values and truths in the game. So everybody knows what that's about. When they want to get you on the, on the other note. So, again, you have to show and prove a little bit. So here's this 500 pounds getting it done. The masculine, 500. It's a good, nice round number. It's a good toe haul level number. This will lower your shock if you're in a pretty brand new SUV and you put it in the back. This will lower your socks a little bit. So again, my name is MIH of MIH Gifting Services. We took you through the full power lift, this full presentation. We've addressed the game. We want to show you right now we're in negotiations of a player coach contract. What my presence would be like on an actual NBA court floor. What I can produce as a player in turn would reproduce itself as a coach. So these are the instances, these are the workouts, these are the, the, the full squats, the power cleans, the terminologies, the sports psychology. Smooth out of thin air. You'd be too tired to keep going after 10 minutes. We already know. 15 minutes, you out, you're done. We know. So coming out of thin air, we're just in the jump shot where it's falling. So coming out of thin air, you're used to the 20, 21 foot shot. You want to start busting at 23, 24 in someone's face, jumping higher, and watching your jumper fall out of thin air with the hand in your face. This is how you deal with some of those sports psychologies because no one's lifting 500 pounds and continually going. Of course, we're asking for the dollar amount that is respectable because nobody's doing this. You get to see me live here. You know, we make it as hard as possible. I'm in boots, work boots, heavy steel toe work boots, jeans, workman's jeans, carpenter jeans, gloves, you know what I'm saying? Wait, got the do-rag on, catching all the sweat. So, again, releasing all of that energy, getting to a different flow, wearing shorts, tank top, and carrying something lighter. You'll notice this is about the same size as a round ball. It's a basketball. So a basketball would fit perfect about right here. So if I wanted to grab the ball, rock, and go any way I wanted to, it would be the release of about 500 plus pounds of resistance and energy on a consistent basis falling. So you got to understand the ratios at a game. Just talking about negotiating as a player coach position. Now, after you get through that part, again, this is a stage performance. We want to address those that I have written for. They know who they are. They know what they're capable of now and what they do if they tend to agree. This is a PowerPoint presentation presented by MRH, Houston Services, MC Rob She, owner, written author, owned the range by Michael R. Henry. You all can call me at 206 six five three six eight one seven hit me on my other mobile two five three six five three no two five three three zero four nine four six one so y'all get that email 
phone all day. It's summertime, we getting it done. So thank you for viewing this power lift. We have broken the 500 pound weight barrier live. Getting it done right here. Go.